What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week I want to talk about confusing short-term responses with long-term outcomes. Kai Green actually tagged me in a post on Instagram and was basically asking like what I thought. And this is a video of a guy named Ben Azadi, I think it is. And uh, this is somebody who I've done a What the Fitness on before, who basically said egg whites made you fat. Apparently everything makes you fat now. I wanna break down his claims in here because the mistake he makes in this video is a mistake that is very common. Honestly, even among some scientists make this mistake. And I think it's really important to understand the difference. So let's watch the video and then I'll kind of comment on it. One of the quickest ways to shorten your lifespan is to have elevated blood sugars. Meaning, if you wanna age faster than anybody you know, eat every two to three hours. Because every time you do that, you raise glucose. And that is poison, it is um, a toxin to the body. It creates inflammation. So what we wanna do is we wanna eat foods that don't really raise glucose and then also have meal timing, which- Okay, so his claim is that if you eat every two or three hours, it'll shorten your lifespan because every time you're eating, you're having increases in blood glucose and that increases inflammation. First problem with this is assuming that what happens in the short term in response to a meal is predictive of what the long term will be. It seems intuitive, okay? If we're spiking blood glucose, that means blood glucose is going to be high in the long term, but that's not how it works. A great example of this is if you look at a high fat meal, a high fat meal in the short term will increase inflammatory markers like endotoxin more than three cigarettes will. And here's the citation. Not only that, but high fat meals have actually been shown to increase inflammation more than high carb meals. It can depend on the type of fat, it can depend on the type of carb, those sorts of things. But short term doesn't equate to long term. And I'm not saying that high fat diets or low carb diets are inflammatory because if you control total intake, they are not. Even protein, for example, if you eat protein, in the short term, you have an elevation in mTOR. Now, if you talk to these longevity experts and these longevity gurus, mTOR is bad because mTOR is really active during cancer. So. What are you supposed to eat? Can't eat protein because it increases mTOR in the short term. Can't eat carbs because it increases inflammation in the short term. And you can't eat fats because they increase inflammation in the short term. What are you gonna eat? You gotta eat something. Again, short term is not predictive of long term outcomes. And we see this, even in an extreme case, there was a study in the 1970s where they took obese men, they had them eat a diet that was very, very low fat, but it was very, very high sugar and refined carbohydrate. In fact, their primary sources of calories in the diet were fruit juices, refined sugar, and white rice. They were in an energy deficit, and guess what? They lost on average about 100 pounds. And their blood glucose, blood pressure, all their blood markers significantly improved. So again, in response to each meal they ate, they were probably having a rise in blood glucose. But on the long term, their blood glucose decreased. Why? Because adipose tissue is pro-inflammatory and it raises blood sugar. If you have high amounts of adipose tissue, at a certain point, you become insulin resistant and that increases blood glucose. And the long-term increase in fasting levels of blood glucose is what is problematic for your health. But you can eat a high carb diet and still have normal to low fasting levels of blood glucose. You can eat a high fat diet and have normal to low fasting levels of blood glucose. You can also eat a high fat diet and have high blood glucose if you have too much body fat. Now the threshold at which your body fat level seems to trigger long-term elevations in blood glucose seems to be somewhat individual, but it seems to be a consistent effect. If you raise body fat enough, eventually, it becomes insulin resistant and you have increases in blood glucose. Another great example of this is that, you know, short-term stuff does not predict long-term stuff. It's just look at exercise. If you exercise, your inflammatory markers go way up, your mTOR activation goes way up, your reactive oxygen species go way up, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up. All this stuff 
If I told you I was going to do something that was going to increase your heart rate, increase your blood pressure, increase your levels of inflammation, increase mTOR activation, increase free radical production, you'd be like, oh no, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. And yet people who exercise live longer. It's because short-term stuff is not predictive of long-term outcomes. And there are so many people, not just, not just been here, even scientists who mix this stuff up all the time. I want you to take away from this video, acute responses are not predictive of long-term outcomes. Now let's get to his second point. Timing, which is where intermittent fasting comes into play. So he said, you know, meal timing, intermittent fasting comes into play, kind of suggesting that intermittent fasting uh, is better for longevity than eating more frequently. I feel like people who are really hardcore in intermittent fasting never took math because you have to eat at some point. And if we are going to compare two diets, if we are going to separate out the effects of fasting versus caloric restriction, we have to equate calories on some time basis. So if we examine somebody after an 18 hour fast, yes, of course they're gonna have better blood markers. They haven't eaten in 18 hours. But then guess what? If they're gonna eat the same amount of calories over a 24 hour period as somebody who's eating you know, meals every three hours, guess what they're gonna to have to do in that six hour period? They're gonna to have to eat way more to get to the same level of calories as the person eating every three hours. So yes, if you eat every three hours, you will have more frequent spikes of blood glucose. But if you're eating all your meals in a six hour window or a four hour window or whatever hour window, a shorter window, you're cramming more food into that time frame. Guess what? You're going to have a much bigger and longer, much more area under the curve of blood glucose. That's probably going to be pretty similar overall to the area under the curve of eating every three hours. This idea, this notion that fasting is best for longevity has been accepted by so many people in the online fitness space when it really has very, very thin evidence to support it. Now, yes, there are studies showing that fasting increases lifespan in mice, usually on the scale of like 10 to 20% in terms of mean survival. Guess what? We have studies in mice and in monkeys, which by the way, are closer to humans in terms of their genetics, showing that caloric restriction improves lifespan about the same amount, about a 10 to 20% amount in terms of mean survival, if we're talking about age-related death. So it's very likely that the effects of fasting on longevity are mostly due to the caloric restriction. Now there is one study, one, in mice, where they fed a kind of what they called a mule feeding approach, which was basically confining food to a certain period of time versus an ad lib approach. Ad lib being the animals could kind of graze throughout the day, eat as much as they wanted. And they said that the mule feeding approach, I think they confined it to a 13 hour window of food, improved longevity by about 11% when compared to the ad lib food group. And their big claim was this was animals eating the same amount of calories with no differences in body weight. So I went through and looked at the data. There are differences in body weight. They don't show it in a table. They showed it in a graph, which made it very tricky to try and pick out. There was basically two diets. One was what's called an NIA diet. One was called the Wisconsin diet. And the reason they were doing these two diets is because they were kind of using the study as a comparator to the studies that were done in monkeys and the study done in the racers monkeys. Uh, one was at NIA and one was at Wisconsin. So hence the name of the two diets because the two diets were kind of different. They had different macronutrient composition, different amount of sugar. Oh, by the way, <laughs> sugar, uh, even though it was way higher in the Wisconsin diet, comparatively, the animals died at the same age. So just that nice little side, even though the sugar was higher, didn't seem to make a difference for longevity when overall the calories were controlled. But I digress. I had to read through the entire thing. And actually with the NIA diet, the body weight data was showing a difference between the ad lib animals and the meal fed or, or intermittent fasted animals. So first off, how can you claim this was independent of body weight? Because at least in that particular diet group, there were differences in body weight. And secondly, how do you explain that if they're getting the same amount of calories? Because every study we have that controls food intake 
compared to intermittent fasting to non-intermittent fasting shows that when calories are equated, they lose the same amount of weight. And then there was some other weird stuff where they took uh, indirect telemetry on the animals, but then they never reported the data. I even tried emailing the authors about the data. I never received an email back. I'm not saying they're purposely trying to avoid me. They could just be busy. But the fact is I did reach out for it and it's not in there. So based on this one study that is making claims that I don't think their data supports, I'm not ready to say that fasting has unique benefits for longevity. When all the other studies we have, especially the studies in monkeys, which again, are closer, much closer to humans genetically than mice, have shown similar effects of caloric restriction compared to fasting protocols that are also employing caloric restriction in terms of mean survival rate. This guy and many people like him are taking really, really, really big leaps with data. This idea that, oh, if you eat every three hours, it's gonna shorten your lifespan. It'll shorten your lifespan if you're overeating overall. If, if you're sitting on the couch, not doing anything, and you're eating every three hours, and you're over consuming calories, yes. But if you're somebody who is exercising, you're controlling overall calories, do you need to worry about eating every three hours shortening your lifespan? I don't think so. Especially not based off of this really, really weak data. So I'm sure a lot of fasting people are gonna have stuff to say about this video. Make sure to leave a comment, like and subscribe, and make sure to click on some of our educational materials in the description, as well as our nutrition app, Carbon Diet Coach, which by the way, you can still do intermittent fasting with if you want. All right, guys, I will catch you next week.